Hey everyone, it's Chris at Lion Punch Forge. It's been a while, but I have some cool stuff today I'd like to show you guys. Um, the next two videos are going to be about, kind of about mining, kind of about uh, gemstones and, and that kind of thing. But uh, this one, this one is particularly going to be about opal. You, you may have noticed that from the title that it's about opal, but not just any opal. We're talking about Oregon opal. And we're not talking about like this kind of opal. We're talking Oregon fire opal. This is uh this stuff's Australian and there's some uh Idahoan. Yes, that's a word. No, no, I don't think it is. But this is all this is all kind of that stuff. We're not talking about this though. What we're gonna talk about <clears throat> is Oregon fire opal. Ready for it? This is it. That is Oregon Fire Opal. And we're going to talk about that today. Talk about mining it, some of my experiences, and uh, all that. But before we start, right down here in my... Ew, I need a band-aid. Anyway, subscribe right down there. See what's going on. Uh, we're going to be ramping up some videos. Uh, I've had a little bit of time off. Done a little, done a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm working on some new jewelry, dropping it on the ground, but like for example, yeah, mother of pearl and sterling silver art nouveau butterfly. So this is the kind of stuff I've been working on. But for now, opal, fire opal, Oregon fire opal, or more specific, is uh, juniper ridge fire opal, due to its locality. So, what we're going to do is first talk a little bit about what opal is. Opal is a gemstone. Alright, opal. Usually about oh, 95 to 97% of the world's opal come from Australia. Um, although, there's been a lot of mining or opal in Oregon over the years, kind of all on and off. Opal Butte, which is now pretty much closed, uh, was a really, really awesome place to dig for opal in Oregon. Uh, the most common uh, stuff you'll find. Eh, it's got a lot of play color. It's kind of uh, uh, gemmy in the sense that it looks like jelly. And there's some really cool pieces that have come out of there. Opals are formed usually in rhyolite, sandstone, um, that kind of thing. Rhyolite geodes are a common source of opal. Um, they're they're kind of a uh, they form in in the cracks of other rocks. So, for example, one way opals form is that the water carrying the mineral silica seeps into a volcanic lava. The lava's got air bubbles that have cooled, and they become little receptacles for liquid deposits. And that's why Oregon is opal territory. From its position at the end of uh, the North American crustal plate, which, you know, it's a thing. There's a lot of volcanic historic and old and not so new and some in recent history in Washington, volcanic activity. So we have a lot of volcanic rock in this area, Oregon and Washington. Um, so that's kind of how it's formed. It's just a uh, water transporting silica and then being deposited. But science aside, we want to see the cool stuff. So basically, Oregon fire opal is hard rock mining. Hard rock meaning this rock is hard. But what you have in here are little veins Let's see right in there. Uh, let's see, there's a vein right in there. And this stuff, basically there's your volcanic rock. And there was a crack between the two pieces as it cleaved away or moved or earthquake or whatever, but it created a, a gap in there. And so water transported the silica and everything else that's required to make this particular variety down into that little area and coated it and Bam, 350 degrees, 25 minutes later, you've got opal. Well, on a, you know, anyway, 
<clears throat> rocks. Cool stuff. Now this is cool in that it's a really awesome specimen. We also have these little guys. So this has got kind of a, a nice, let me grab a little bit of water. You guys can see what it looks like. I think it's a little bit wet. So let me make sure you guys see that a little bit. So that's kind of Oregon fire opal. It doesn't really have the play of colors that you'd expect with fire, but the color is is kind of what they're what they're going off of with the fire opal. Let me find my flashlight, and you guys can. Yeah, so I have a little dendrites in there. Probably I could be wrong, but manganese. Yeah fun stuff then you got a little bit thinner vein but it comes right out of this stuff and it can be relatively fragile you would imagine that breaking away hard rock to get soft opal out would be uh, painstaking you would think and uh, if you thought that it would turn out you're absolutely correct it is painstaking and sometimes frustrating but we're going to talk about success today. So, we have some pieces that we'll show you and talk about. And I'm going to try and get a variety of colors here so you kind of see what comes out of that area. They're nice black. Grab some chips. Some yellows, some oranges, some reds. Let's move this over. There we go. So here's Oregon Fire Opal. Let me zoom that. There we go. All right. So we have a kind of a nice zonal color. This piece is, you, know, you could probably get a faceted stone out of that. You cut it right here and then preform. Um, but it's nice enough for a cab. It's nice enough for. You know, just mounting as is, or a specimen piece. But see the yellow colors. This one is absolutely not an opal. I don't know what's here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Here's some more of that yellow. You got some dendrites down in the bottom. And then you get into some of the other pieces where you have a really nice variation of colors. And some of those colors will lighten up when you cut the stone. Some will stay as is. Um, this is phenomenal stuff to work, to cab, to facet, some yellow. This one I'll probably keep as a specimen piece just because it's really nice and zonal. You got that nice red going into orange. And it's a big enough chunk that I'd kind of like to keep it as such. This guy. A little bit darker it's more of like a you know almost like a cognac color which is really cool but different sh chips different shards and it's it's not easy to get out it's you know it's hammer chisel out in the sun and for a long time you were able to do feed digs for this stuff now you have to get an invitation from a mine owner or know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy um, because it's all under claim there's a nice red but this stuff makes phenomenal faceted stones it makes really really cool cabs and a lot of the time if you have the right piece you can cab one out or even facet one out with some of those black dentrites in there here's a cool one See if I can get a, a zoom on him. All right, so there are your dentrites. My flashlight might be going dead, or oh, it's not bad. Yeah. So that's Oregon Fireable. I'm going to uh, post some uh, faceted pictures what the stuff looks like um, I'll post some pictures of the trip the view from the mine and and all sorts of stuff but this stuff is too pretty to uh, just keep in a bin and 
not share with you guys because this kind of stuff is what adventuring is all about. Now, I do have a question for you as we're going to end this. When you guys go out and you do your exploring and your camping and all that, and you start to get, you know, my age, which I won't say, but I will tell you that I am old enough to know that I am too old to sleep on the ground. So, what I'd like to ask is, what do you guys uh, prefer camping-wise? You still like sleeping in a tent on the ground or I'm actually kind of thinking about an off-road teardrop trailer for uh, some adventures so if you have any input or any uh, anything that you guys do you want to let me know that would be amazing so two days worth of mining I was able to process this and I still have some that I need to process and cut some of the um, host stone away but this is a uh, this was a worthwhile trip. I didn't take any video of the trip, mostly because it uh, was a long ways away and I forgot. So, there's that. But, anyway, if you guys want to see more of this type of stuff, I've got one more kind of video. It's not really a mining video as so much it is a sapphire video. So it's like going through the sapphire gravel. Kind of what that looks like if you buy bags of sapphire gravel. So, I hope you guys enjoyed if you want to see more Fire Opal, you want to see more Rock Adventures, you want to do more that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments down below. Also, there's a little subscribe button down there. Focus on my finger. There we go. Yeah, right down there. That little guy, he wants to be pushed. If you push him, I'll know. I'll know. Well, wait, is there focus? There we go. I'll know. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you love Fire Opal as I do, and uh, have a great day. Be amazing. Thank you.